Okay, here we are getting ready to discuss our first actual research source, images, for week one. We're only going to be doing one per week, but the one for today is images. And here you see your teacher. You see your teacher down in the lower right-hand corner as well. And again, we're going to be talking about images as a research source. Now, pictures can be fun. They can help us remember things very well. What does this picture help us remember? Well helps us remember that the Three Stooges were entertainers at one point in time. It helps us remember that the Three Stooges used kind of rough humor. It helps us remember that one of the things that would oftentimes happen is Moe would oftentimes be mean to Larry and Curly. But you can see how an image can indeed get your attention. But let's move on. To do our example here today, we're going to be talking about just for several images and then for the images you're going to analyze for the assignment attached to this the theme of bravery because as you learned in your thematic note take video themes guide your research action so in this video we're going to just look at it and analyze it before we start to learn more detailed ways to do this so we look at it and we get basically a general impression obviously it was a view of warfare and if you look just a little bit more specifically, it looks like based on the uniforms they're wearing, it was probably an old war, perhaps the Civil War. And if you thought that, it would be true. And you can see that they would oftentimes fight out in the open. This is not street fighting, as sometimes happens in modern day warfare. This is fighting out in a field. So then you're thinking, if your theme that you're analyzing with is bravery. If the topic of your product, be it a research paper or website or whatever, is bravery, how could you see bravery in this? What can you get for that topic in this picture? Well, one thing that you can see is you can look at the direction in which the men fell, and they basically fell backwards, so they must have been charging into battle, no matter what the danger was. You can see the fact that they did sacrifice their lives, so that does indeed have something to do with bravery. And you could actually use this for more than just the theme of bravery. You could use it for different topics. Now let's look at another image from another time period. What can we get from this picture about the theme of even battle? Let's step off of bravery for a minute, battle. Well, it looks like they're rushing in. You can see this uh, gentleman here looking on this way. This gentleman on the other side of the helicopter seems to be looking down the other way. So they're on the watch for something. So that might tell you that there's danger in the area. Now, of course, if you read a little bit more about the use of helicopters in Vietnam, you would be able to add even more into your analysis. The more you know about the topic you're studying, the more you can get out of a resource such as images. Now, what if we, however, use that same theme? What if our theme was not Vietnam or the United States Civil War, but what if our theme was bravery? Could you get anything out of this one and that one? For instance, these guys were charging into battle. These guys were char are charging into battle. These guys, now, these are uh, men that have been killed, but you can also see how some of them are facing f in this direction. They fell backwards. Some are facing this way, some are facing this way, so maybe they were looking out for each other to see what was going on when they were hit. As you see these guys looking in different directions to watch out for things, watch out for danger and problems. You can see this. these guys are holding weapons as his hand up on a weapon. This guy here would be on a machine gun. These guys, the weapons are no longer there. But uh, you also see that they probably would have had them with them, otherwise they would have been going into battle. So, we can use themes, as we did to go through written sources, to analyze and start to pull information together from images as well. But let's move on. Now, this isn't warfare directly. Maybe it was we considered an act of war. This is Ground Zero on 9-11. These aren't soldiers. These are firemen. In what ways do you see bravery there? Well, when they were going down there on this pile of debris, there was no knowledge as to whether there might be another attack in that same spot or not. Also, 
there was danger with things falling, with the fire that was building down from below the debris. You also see another aspect of bravery in the picture on your lower left or lower right. One of the effects of bravery is emotional trauma. Now, ask yourself, could read about this and somebody could tell you and you could put it out of a text, a version of something. Or you could look at this. This adds into your overall research approach and it can oftentimes give you information that is not visible, not clear in other sources that are simply text-based. It's hard to get emotion, true emotion, from a text-based resource. However, there is a more efficient way, a more standardized way of going through in-depth analysis. And we're going to go to document that's going to help you see that. And I'll show you where it is first on your Blackboard class. So you go into your Blackboard class here. You would go to Resources and Research Analysis Guides. And this is the first one we're doing. We'll be doing all these others later, but this is the first one we're doing. You see Image Analysis Guides. So it's going to be right there. Remember, Resources, Research Analysis Guides, and there it is. Now what it looks like is this. And you can see we go through three steps. The first step, and you'll be surprised at how much comes out of this when you do this, is you look at the image for about two minutes, just in general. And you don't even have to list anything down during that two minutes period. Now after that, then you start to list it and divide it into three categories. What activities do you see? What people do you see? And what objects do you see? So let's go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint. And we'll pick a very famous image attached to the student protest in Communist China, People's Republic of China, in Tiananmen Square in Beijing. This happened a day after the army started to crack down on the rebels. So the guy that was doing this knew that hundreds if not thousands of people, his possible uh, compadres, had been killed the day before. But yet he was still willing to do this. So you form an overall impression. You're looking at the whole image. You're getting I see exhaust from a tank in the back. I see the vehicle it seems to be actually moving in the upper left of the picture. I see the four tanks. Obviously, they're stopped because the man is standing in front of them. I see multiple lanes. I counted up, I think, about eight lanes of traffic in this picture. So a square is a place where people can gather. People can gather there, and they'll be there even daytime or nighttime, which I'm told by the fact that there's the uh, light fixture down there in the lower part of the picture. So that's my two minute, I know it might not be two minutes, just analysis. Now I'm going to start to look at activities and I'm going to do this in a focused way. Activities, I see movement. I see a car in the upper left moving. Another activity, I see a man standing in front of a line of four tanks. I see exhaust. So maybe the tank in the back, its engine is still running, but I don't see exhaust coming necessarily from the other tanks. So it looks like they may have already shut their engines off. Makes me wonder, why did they not just go around? But that's in a section in this note guide. People, the only person I see is that lone man. And it's a pretty wide area, so he's by himself pretty much right there right now. Standing in front of the tanks. Now, I know I can infer, that's one of the things you do is you infer, that there are tank crews to run the tank inside of each tank. And the objects I see, well... Again, I see the light uh, fixture in the lower part of the picture. I see the four tanks with their cannons and their machine guns and things. I see them and he's holding something in his hand. Could be a backpack, could be bags, like grocery bags. I see it could be a car or a Jeep or something in the upper corner. I see multiple lane traffic. And what helps me out, again, an object that helps me out is the painted lines. It tells me that this is indeed traffic and not just parking. So they're in a traveled part of the city. And section two of note guide, step two is inference. Based on what you have observed above the things that we listed, list three or more things you might infer from this photograph. Well, again, adding in a little bit of knowledge of this incident on June 5th, 1989, I know that this man is showing bravery, that he's taking an extreme risk because a communist nation like communist China is an authoritarian government. They don't take this for too long. Now, they just killed people the day before. So he's, I can infer that he's willing to sacrifice his life because he knows this, that the day before similar activities resulted in people being killed. 
I can infer, I don't know how important this is, but I can infer that there are crew members in the tank. But what I can also infer is the fact that the crew members decided to stop. At least the lead tank decided to stop. I might, I don't know whether this would be valid, I might infer that perhaps that tank commander was somewhat sympathetic. Uh, that or I can infer that he had been given orders for some reason after the massacre. I don't know why they give this order, but maybe don't kill anybody in the open right here. Because by that time, of course, the world was watching even more closely, and maybe China didn't want that adverse publicity to go on. I can also infer that something happened to him afterwards. Because if he's out there by himself, and he is in a government that basically controls the people with secret lease and things like that, I can infer that something happened to him. Don't know what. There is some disagreement if you look up Tiananmen Square and look up The Unknown Rebel or do a Google search on Tank Man, you'll find difference of opinions of what actually happened. So that inferencing about what it means, the bravery that I see in here, that it took a lot of bravery, that there might have been some sympathy. That also branches into step three, which is what story does this image tell us about bravery? What are questions that we might ask ourselves that would add to our analysis and our research. Well, I could ask myself the question, what happened next? That would be something I could go check out. Or I could ask myself the question, what brought the situation in China at that time to this point? What was going on? Does that add into our understanding of bravery if we knew what happened before and after? So you can see how you can analyze a picture a whole lot more than just sitting there and saying, hey, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go and look at some more. Here you see General Washington and his troops at Valley Forge. You might notice that some of these men are walking barefooted in the snow. That is a fact. That is documented that that happened. Bravery. This is Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863. Men fighting hand to hand. This is the 5th Marines on Iwo Jima in 1944 during World War II. Under fire, participating in a religious service. This is an incident of what happened with Sergeant Ben Crippen as the Union Army was retreating from Gettysburg. He turned around to the Confederates, holding the flag, and raised his fist like that. Even people on the Confederate side admired the bravery. Now here you see the aspect of bravery, sacrifice. Now say, Mr. Stevens, do I see sacrifice in this picture? Well, the medic is caring for a wounded soldier, even though he himself is wounded. And can't see much at all. So the ability to sacrifice, you pull that out. The research on bravery, that's one aspect of bravery, being willing to sacrifice. And you'd be able to give a pretty good description of that that would be very powerful, whether it's a research paper or a website, from looking at an image like this. And again, another medic in Vietnam. Here they are at a fire base, marine fire base in Vietnam, way up in the hills. So you say, hmm. How does that show bravery? Being isolated, knowing that the uh, enemy is down there below in the hills. This is an extreme message of bravery that you'll learn about when you study World War II history. D-Day at Oha Beach. Men hiding behind those uh, barriers in the surf as the water continued to rise because the Germans are on the cliffs up above. They're not retreating. They can't retreat. They have to forward. Again, sacrifice. You see paratroopers flying to jump behind Germans, German lines on the night, or actually the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning of D-Day. Now you could look at this and you might make an inappropriate interpretation if you don't th stop and think. They're laughing. Does that mean they don't take the situation seriously? Or is that laughter born out of nervousness? We don't know, but that's where you get into some of the inferencing that adds into your analysis of the images. Here you see Admiral Byrd's expedition to the Antarctic. Does this show bravery? Was this a certain situation that they were going to be safe? So maybe one of the elements you could bring in, one of the sub-themes you could bring into your analysis of bravery is uncertainty. Are they willing to face that? Here's another aspect that you'll be learning about in history this year, 7th grade history. If you're an 8th grader, you've already learned about this. It's first step on the moon. Neil Armstrong. And there's Buzz Aldrin also going down. That would lead us to think exactly how much bravery was necessary 
to be involved in this activity. Now, we're going to be getting some more specifics on this in future lessons, but this gives you an idea of what you can use for citation information. Now, there are citation guides available for you on the Blackboard site, but this shows you some specific examples. Why do you want to cite? Because you've got to give credit to other people's work when you use it. So now, I'm going to go to the Blackboard class to show you where your assignment is going to be for this work. So we go back to the Blackboard class, and we go to Course Materials, and we go to Lesson 1 because this is part of Lesson 1. And this is Image Analysis, so we go inside the Image Analysis folder, and right up here is the rubric that you can use to see how the work is going to be evaluated. And here is the assignment. Look at all the images in the PDF documents part 1 and 2 below. They are right here. Bravery Images Part 1, Bravery Images Part 2. Now, after looking at the images, pick up one to two images to do in-depth analysis of using the provided image analysis guide. You can learn about the technique by analyzing only one image if that's all the time you have, and that's okay. But if you want to develop even more ability, do two. Then you're going to work within your practice wiki. Where are the wikis? Well, in the button that says wikis. Now this is your final project wiki. That is not the wiki you're going to use for this image analysis assignment. You're going to go into practice wikis and you're going to go into your wiki and you're going to do your analysis using the image analysis guide. Now if you cannot actually copy and paste the guide itself in, then what you should do is copy step one, paste that onto a wiki page. You're going to be seeing a wiki editing guide here in a little while. And then you can copy this and paste that, and or at least copy the categories, activities, people, and objects, and make lists. Then copy in step two, inferencing, and put your inferences down there in step three, questions. So that is what you're going to be doing for the assignment. And all you've got to do is, again, to remind you, you look at the images. You pick out one or two if you want to do two. You analyze them by going to the practice wiki. You copy and paste those sections you need to use from the image analysis guide. You use it there. So, if you have any questions, again, put them on the class sharing blog where we come to communicate. That's just one spot. There's also a mail, of course, but this way, not just me can help you, but you can help each other. So, that is our brief presentation, relatively brief, on analyzing images, using images as a resource. So.